Hey everyone, sorry for the awful hair. Um, right, I had a message from someone on my PPL skills test preparation two whole lessons video. Uh, and that was from Gear Kano. Uh, you're appearing just here. Where can I get a win card image to print out? So I very kindly sent you over the win card image. It's actually on my YouTube, it's actually on my website here, my Times with James website. I said to you, if you want a quick lesson, let me know and I'll run you through it. Uh, you replied, yes, please, because uh, I have my PPL mock test in nine days and I want to know how to use this perfectly. Uh, and it's never failed me so far, so we're going to go and do a proper run through of it now. What you're going to need before you start, you're going to need a plotter, you're going to need your standard whiz wheel flight computer, and you're also going to need for this particular test, but you don't really need to be um, in this place, uh, but we're going to do something over Dublin area because that's where... Uh, this guy is. I don't know how to say your name, man. Gear Kano or, or Gear Kano? I don't know. Um, anyway, let's get on with this, okay? And let's do it. So the first thing I've done, we do what we always do when we're about to go flying. We check what the weather is going to be. And it's looking like over Dublin, air, Dublin area, uh, the weather's going to be nice and clear or something like that, okay? But most importantly, we've got the wind at 2,000 feet is 350 at 5 knots, okay? So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to put that onto my map and we're going to pop that into our WizWheel computer. We do all this before we fly. So let's get on with it. Right then guys, so we've got our wind, which today is 350 at five. Um, and what we've done is we've already put our wind in on our WizWheel. Uh, I just want to show you how I've done that. So we put 350 at the top, get this so the circ dot here is down at the bottom just like so and then we put our little five knot mark just in here like that it's just a little square just there if I move this one so a little extra there you can just see that moving around like that okay all we need to do is get our actual wind card ready okay this wind card here ready for use for when we get given our diversion on our skills test all we need to do is use our whiz wheel to input the different directions so we've got north east south, west, northeast, etc, etc, etc. And it's really easy to do. Once I know the airspeed that I'm going to be going at, and I say on this particular flight I want to do 100 knots, so there's our 100 knots there, and then I set that we're going to be going north, I can then see, because my X is there, that we're going to be doing 94 knots heading north, and the correction angle is negligible, so zero there. So now I just set it round to northeast. Now I think we're probably doing about 95 knots there. Our correction angles move slightly over here. Remember our wind is coming out of 350 just there. So if we're heading this way, we're going to drift that way, aren't we? Because our wind's pushing us that way. So we need to correct according to the dots on here. So that is one, two, three. So I'm going to take three degrees off my heading when I'm up there. I'm going east, doing about 101 knots. And the correction is just a bit more now. I'm probably just still taking about four off, maybe three. Remember that the forecast itself is a prediction, and so is this. The thing is, once we're up there and we do the diversion, we're not just going to use this and go, right, that's the best way we're going. We're not going any other direction. We're going to use things like gross error checks. We're going to be looking out the window for things to, to point out where we are and where we're going. Southeast, we're going to be doing about 105 knots now. And our correction angle is about minus two. Because you think about it, 350 is there. And sometimes as well, for me to visualize it, I'll actually get my rule. <laughs> Pause the video now, do the rest of these yourself, and then We'll come back in two seconds time and you can see the ones we should roughly have something similar within one or two, you know, bits and pieces. So once you've finished, you should hopefully have something that's about 104, 100, 95. These are our speeds. Then plus two, plus three and plus four for our corrections. Why do these say plus? Imagine we're flying in this direction. 350 is coming across us like that. We're going to start drifting that way. Therefore, we need to plus a little bit so we can crab through the wind and hold that heading. That's why, okay? So, let's go to the flight itself. When you're flying, 
You're not really going to have your wind wheel, you're not going to be playing around with that while you're up there. It's right pain in the bum. All you're going to have is your plotter, your diversion calculator, and your map. Oh yeah. One little tip. I actually, when I do my, all my pilot log and everything and planning goes on here, then look, I've got heading compass, that's the big bit, time, distances, everything for actual in-flight nav is there on this side of the page. So when I get in the plane, I fold this over like that. So look, I can see my heading compass, my times, call signs, I've got frequencies for VORs, I've got radio frequencies there, I've got memnomics just down here, and then I've got things like engine start, QFE, Q and H's, and things like that. But this is the good bit, guys. Imagine this is pinned over the top of my map on my kneeboard. And you rip this. You've done that, and they go, right, I want you to divert here. You lift this up. Oh my God, look at that. And that's all pinned on there, ready for you. So look, let's have a look at a test diversion. Hopefully you can see this map okay. I know there's a few, another light's shining on it a bit funny, but there you go. So let's say we're flying from Wexford down here to Hackettstown, which is just up here, okay? And we're flying along. I'm not gonna do any of the headings like that or anything like that now. And then the inevitable happens, always happens. You get to about here, say, and your examiner says, um, Hackettstown's shut now. I want you to divert to Newcastle which is just up there, okay? Now the first thing you're going to do is rather than go, oh my God, I'm gonna get my plotter out and start going from here, that's like the worst thing ever. Find somewhere, a landmark that's nearby, that's easy to see, and from this map here, it looks like a place called Gory, you'd probably be able to see that, big motorway there. Um, so Gory, so right, that's where I'm gonna go from. And now what we do, we input the information from this map into here and then we use this we use this to come up with where we're going to go and how long it's going to take us so the first thing i always do is i would just draw the actual line that i've already done that i'm going to take done there there and then this is why these are so good the rnp1 these are great you put this target over the top of where we're going to start our diversion you bring this guide up to here yeah and then straight away we can see that we're going to be doing about 25 to 26, 25 to 26 nautical miles. So boom, straight away, let's put 26. Or you know what, let's put 25 slash 26. And then look, we've got a gauge here of distances along this piece here. 5 nautical miles, 10, 15, 20, 25 to 26. So let's just put my little arrow, I just put that there like that, okay? Because in a minute we're going to come down from here and then go across here from our speeds and that's going to tell us how long it's going to take to get there. Now another good thing about these rulers is that you don't actually have to then flip this over and get the arrow on there and then try and get your directional degree. As you can see it's saying roughly something in the region of about 0.25 degrees, something like that. But because this is a diversion and sometimes you just want to get there, get in the right direction, if you hold that over here and then read due up north from that. Look at that, 025, roughly 025. So look, 360, 010, 020, 030, 040, 050, 060. So that pretty much cuts that there, doesn't it? So that's 025 degrees. So now we know that our heading is 025 degrees. All the while we're doing this, we're flying the plane, and you know what? We haven't even got to Gory yet because we've given ourselves the time to get there. 025 degrees, we've already put the distance in. So now all we need to do is figure out how fast we're going and what our correction angle is gonna be. So look, I go around to here, I find 025, which is there. It's right in the center of these two. So 94 to 95 knots. So that's probably just about here. And we're going to take off maybe, I don't know, one or two. Probably not even that. One or two. So look, it's saying minus three there. Take three off the heading or zero. So, I don't know, take one off the heading. To be honest, the drift bit, just ignore it. So variation is minus one. Therefore, our correct heading is zero, two, four. Time to destination, zero, two, five down to there. I don't know, about 17 minutes. Something like that. Now, you can tell your examiner, you've only been in the air for two hours, 
you've got five hours endurance in your Cessna, you're definitely gonna make it. But look, let's not end this particular d demonstration there. Let's actually have a look at what Sky Demon tells us. This is what I now use, <laughs> by the way. There's Gory. There's Newcastle. Let's have a look at the pilot log. Does it match up with what we said on here? So our pilot log says we want to do a heading of 024. Yep, exactly right. Um, the distance is 26 nautical miles and the time is going to be 17 minutes. So there you go, that's how that works. I practiced this method that we've got here. I practiced it probably 50 times. Um, and the way I practiced it was I think the way that actually made it realistic I didn't just sit here and do it like we just did there. I didn't do it all at once. And my wife, Emily, thought I was going crazy because what I'd do, I'd sit there with my kneeboard on, with my map there, exactly as if I was flying the plane. And then I'd just say to Emily, um, you've got somewhere in East Anglia, pick a town or anything like that, because that's where I live, at that, that this way. Um, you have to choose anywhere. Just choose anywhere now. And she'd come up with, like, oh no, Ipswich. And I'd go, right, I was, I was here, and then I'd, basically what I'd do is I'd plot where I'm going. Then I'd put my plotter down, put my pen down, and I'd fly the plane. And by that, what I meant is literally I'd, I'd do something like, I would know, pick up a book, or I'd just look up, and I'd just ask Emily something about, I would know, anything. Anything that took me away from doing the diversion, because that's what you have to do. You have to split your brain in two. You're not just doing a diversion here, you're flying an aircraft at the same time, you're talking on the radio, you're doing engine management, you're making sure that if you've got passengers, they're okay. Then you go back to this, bang, how far is it? Right, put that down on the thing. Look up, fly the plane, okay? Go back down, what's the heading? Bang, put that in. Look up, fly the plane, engine, radio, stuff like that. And I sat in a chair with my kneeboard on in the kitchen, doing that, and I must have done it 50 times, when it came to the diversion, when I came to doing it, didn't matter where he told me to go, I was happy to go and take him there. And honestly, this, this particular method I've used for diversions every time, and it's never, ever failed me. So there you go, that's how I do it. Um, thanks, man, for like messaging us. Let me know how you get on. And if this doesn't work for you, it works for me. Everyone's got different ways of doing it. Um, and this is actually sort of a bigger version of the diversion meter that you can get on these. Some plotters have these on there as well. But I like this, I can draw on it. And also if I've ripped that top page off, if I get anything like squawk codes or anything like that, while I'm flying, I've got a nice bit of paper to write it on when I'm doing it. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed that mate. I hope it helps you out. Good luck with your PPL and let me know how it goes. See you soon. <laughs>